Hello Harris County and happy centennial. This month we'll be traveling way Hey Terrell, uh, we're ready to go. You want to dance on over over here? Sorry Celeste, I was working on, on my dance moves. I heard we were going to the 1950s and I wanted to make sure that we fit in. Are you guys ready? Yep, let's rock and roll right into the next decade. Wait, this isn't the Spring Branch Library, which opened up in 1959. Where are we? Come on, folks, let's burn some rubber. We got a show to start. Oh, where's our host? Hey, you guys seen Larry? We're live in 10 and I can't find him. I don't know who Larry is, but you look like you're in charge. Do you think you can tell us what's going on around here? And who are you? What are y'all, a bunch of beatniks? I'm Paul Hoondorf, chief engineer of KPRC, or Houston's first television station, and the second in Texas after those dorks up in Fort Worth beat us to it. We used to be named Kelly E.E., -E, but then those hobby family honchos over at the Houston Post bought us out and turned us into an NBC affiliate, and changed our name to match KPRC Radio. Sometimes I miss our end of years. Anywho, Larry is the host of The Larry Kane Show, Harris County's first rock and roll television program. We're really cooking with gas with this one. It's gonna be a hit. If we could find our star! Oh wow, I've seen the dance show on Grease, but I didn't realize Houston has its very own music show. Harris County, you're ready to cut a rug. Sure is. Now, I don't mean to bash ears here, but let me tell you that the Houston Ballet and the Houston Grand Opera Association also opened a few years back and are something pretty nifty to see. Harris County also just finished creating the first man-made Lake Houston after the completion of the San Jacinto Dam in 1953. That is amazing. Oh, I love watching ballet dancers. Speaking of dancing, what's the music scene like these days? Well, it goes without saying that the birth of rock and roll in the mid-1950s was the most exciting and popular development in music in the decade. Evolving from predominantly black music genres like rhythm and blues and gospel, rock and roll swept the nation with acts such as Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, and Little Richard at the forefront. It also popularized the electric guitar, probably the most popular instrument in the world today. The 1950s was a very happening decade. Acts like the Flamingos popularized the vocal pop genre doo-wop with hits like I Only Have Eyes For You, while jazz music introduced new genres like cool jazz and began the careers of heavyweights like Miles Davis and John Coltrane. In fact, Miles Davis' 1959 album, Kind of Blue, often considered one of the greatest albums ever recorded, is available to download for free with your library card through the website freegalmusic.com. The movies are also in an interesting place in the 1950s. <laughs> the movies. Why go to the theater when you have one in your living room? It is true that television spooked the film industry. This led to Hollywood embracing innovative technologies like widescreen, larger budgets, more location shooting, international productions, and gimmicks like 3D and smell -o vision as a way of offering something to viewers that television, small black and white screens, and low production values could not. Hey, I resent that. That said, some incredible films came out during the period. It was a golden era for science fiction films with releases like 1954's Godzilla and 1956's Forbidden Planet. Auteurs like Alfred Hitchcock and Akira Kurosawa arguably reached their peak with 1958's Vertigo and 1954's Seven Samurai. The latter is available on Canopy, a website and app that lets you stream movies for free using your library card. Other films from the 50s on Canopy include the Audrey Hepburn starring Roman Holiday, master Indian filmmaker Satachit Rai's film Pather Panchali, the Gary Cooper western classic High Noon, and the French New Wave masterpiece The 400 Blows. Wait! We're librarians! We need to talk about books! Huh, you mean like Catcher in the Rye, Things Fall Apart, The Lord of the Rings, The Lord of the Flies, The Haunting of Hill House, Naked Lunch, or iRobot? Jeepers! You're better read than I thought! <laughs> well, just because I'm a TV whiz doesn't mean I don't read. The 1950s saw many classics that commented on social issues of the time that still resonate decades later. James Baldwin's Notes of a Native Son and Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man were a huge influence to the growth of the civil rights movement of the 1960s. While Arthur Miller's The Crucible criticized the Red Scare of McCarthyism with an allegory that remains recognizable today. 
Other important books from the 1950s, like Fahrenheit 451 and On the Road, are available to check out as ebooks and e audiobooks using the Overdrive and Libby apps. Some audiobooks, like the 1952 children's classic, Charlotte's Web, even feature a full cast of celebrity voice actors bringing the book to life. Ugh, I just can't keep up with all these slang y'all teeny boppers are cooking up nowadays. Prices sure aren't what they used to be. The present to the 1950s price comparisons are something else. While the economy changes each decade, they still blow my mind with how low they are. The average salary was around $3,200 a year. A new house was only 8,500 bucks. A gallon of gas was still less than two dimes. And if you wanted a hamburger, a pound of meat was only 30 cents and a loaf of bread, just a little over a dime. In case you're wondering where to find the decade statistics for yourself, our stats come from www.thepeoplehistory.com. Huh, sounds like y'all should just go up to that new uh, burger joint down the street. I hear they have hamburgers for 15 cents. What is it called, uh, McDougal's? McDonald's? Oh. <sighs> Looks like they found Larry. Time to get this show on the road. Now you kids get back to where you came from and make sure to check out our KPRC broadcast. If you want to know more about KPRC history, check out the book, The Fault Does Not Lie With Your Set, The First 40 Years of Houston Television, co-written by Paul Hundorf. It's available to check out at Harris County Public Library. Wait, what? A uh, Paul Hun... Uh, do you happen to have a copy of that that I could uh, just look through a little bit? Um, if, in case you have any time to let me borrow that, that would be pretty um, nice. Paul! Okay, put a lid on it! I'm coming, I'm coming! Paul! Don't you want to see my dance moves? We'll be traveling to a new decade each month, so keep an eye out on HCPL's YouTube and social media feeds to join us next time. See you in the past.